Hello, dear friends. This is Kardec Radio at 11 p.m., always nourishing our souls. We are here with Lifting Hope. Lifting Hope is a program based on the book Memoirs of a Suicide. We have here therapeutic conversations in which we can empower ourselves and lift our hopes up. Because this book, if we could subtitle it, we would say Book of Hope. From beginning to end, we see that we're never alone, we're not doomed to hell, and there is always a new beginning. Though, there is the law of action and reaction, and we cannot escape it, right? We cannot escape the law of action and reaction. In previous chapters, we have learned that Camilo, Camilo Castello Branco, the main author of this book, is the one that brings to us not only about his life, but the life of many of his friends that he got to know in the spiritual realm. He teaches us about the consequences of his act of suicide, of his friends as well, but he shows to us a beautiful world that besides our miseries, there are the illuminated minds who evolve the head of us and do not forget us. They come back, they work day in, day out to help us out. They work day in, day out to help us out. So welcome, dear friends, to Kardec Radio. I see here Daisy Gallon. Hello, Daisy. Hello, Carol. How are you? Hello, Rihanna. How have you been? Adilson. Welcome, Adilson. You know, I wanted to say Adilson, like in Portuguese we say, right, Adilson? And I know there are many friends here, but I cannot see you unless you write a comment. Oh, feel free. If you're watching this live and you want to share a thought, ask a question, remember, we are in a classroom. And the teacher, not me, the good and illuminated spirits, including Leon Denis. Leon Denis, who revised the book in 1956 and made this masterpiece available to us. As Carlos said to me the other day, I don't think the Spiritist Movement has already valued enough this book. And I don't think it did. I know Chico Xavier did and some other scholars, but we are not exploring it to its extent because this is not only for suicides. This book is about life. We learn about action and reaction. We learn about preparation for immortality. We learn about how to tame our inner passions, how to work on our inner tendencies. And today, chapter 19 is titled, The Old Man. It's all about learning about the old conditionings. So, first of all, we can understand who we are, know ourselves, and then tame it. In psychology, in a beautiful project that was started with a psychologist in California. And I met her in 2009 at a, an international book fair. She put together this beautiful dictionary of emotions and cards named Onion Had. And you can find it more at the website uh, harnessinghappiness.com. And she says the strategy to work on it is to name our emotions in order to tame them. So here, self-knowledge is vital. This book brings to us the reasons why you and I need to strive to understand ourselves, to see where we come from, what we've been doing through many lives and be less defragmented. Look at a flower. A flower is beautiful because it emanates harmony in all of its features, right? But then if at some day, on a, one of these days, you look 
at this very flower and there is a petal that is falling apart. It's still beautiful, but it changes the emanation of harmony in a way. I'm just giving you a very simple example. So we are also beings that are marching towards emanating this homogeneous harmony that come from God, nourishes us, us, and we need to emanate it. Right, Raquel Bakeshi? Welcome to Kardec Radio. Welcome, Jailton. How are you? Welcome, Paula. How have you been? Hello, Nora Brasil and Sunshine. How have you been, Sunshine? Lisa Telles, welcome. So, I think many people will be surprised about the revelations of this chapter too. It's, it's always a revelation after revelation, a revelation, and this is such a treat. As Chico Xavier said, the spiritist literature is the treasure on earth. And you and I are so wealthy because we have access to something that is unprecedented on earth. Think about it. These books, there are none like them on earth. When I see people talking about book clubs, I wish people really knew about those books. They will get to know. But when I see those book clubs, I say, yeah, they're great, but this is phenomenal because it brings the whole nine yards about life, about sciences, etc. I'm not invalidating the other books. They're all fascinating, but these books are complete. And you know why? Because as Umberto de Campos wrote in his book, Good News, through Chico Xavier, and Camilo wrote in this book through Yvonne Pereira, they are not writing to entertain people. The spiritist literature does not entertain us per se. It may be delightful, but it's deeply nourishing. It's not something that makes us happy and passes. It sustains us. It's what Jesus said to the woman of the well in Samaria, the Samaritan woman, he said, if you drink of my water, this living water, you will never go thirsty again. That's the difference between the spiritist books and the, the other ones, because it is complete. It talks about history, geography, geology, it talks about psychology. It talks about medicine. It talks about chemistry. It talks about genetics. It talks, it, there are novels and all of them, they complete ourselves, nourishing ourselves completely. They don't give us something and there's still something lacking. In this book, we'll find the same. Right, John De Rosa? Okay, chapter 19. Where are we? Remember, Camilo, Belarmino, Mario, eh, not Mario Sobral, but João de Azevedo, and others, 35 others, they were taking courses at university in several different topics. Epaminondas was one of the main teachers, Aníbal, Soraya Mar, and others. So he says that since the beginning of the year 1906, we had turned to the earth several times to live amongst its societies for a while. So remember, the courses had practical activities which were to really walk the talk. That's the beauty. Like Spiritist Centers. If you go to Spiritist Center, or you coordinate a spiritist center and you only go there and study and study and study and study but we do not together go and reach out to our local community everything is just talk 
tok, 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 not coherent. That's why Chico Xavier was very, very effective. He had deep roots in his community. He cared for the locals first, first. And that made his roots be so strong. He didn't do it out of a calculated strategy. But for us who have him as an example ahead of us, we can observe, like any tree, the roots. When you see a, a, a new seed, since we are approaching spring in, in the North Hemisphere, when you plant a seed, first roots come down, then it goes up and sprouts out of the soil. And then it keeps inbrooding itself and spreading itself out locally. You can't have a beautiful tree without roots. No spirit center will be solid if it doesn't have a good, solid, effective, charitable action. You may be doing your charity, but if the group, the center itself, doesn't organize itself, it does not go elsewhere. The same happens in the discourse in the spiritual realm. The same. They study, but they have to go, and you see, multiple duties called us there. It was a vast field of experimentation for us, because being slated to live there many times in the future, it was highly useful for us to apply among our brothers and sisters in humanity the knowledge we were gradually acquiring via our, via our work in the spiritual world. Thus, under the supervision of Anibal de Silas and the practical assistance of Surai Omar's vast secular experience, we increased the deeds of charity that we had begun under Theocritus' care. We multiplied our efforts to serve suffering hearts, right? We served at the colony's emergency outposts, as well as the Mary of Nazareth Hospital and its auxiliaries. We joined caravans to aid suicides lost in the loneliness of the lower invisible, as well as those in earthly abysses persecuted by phalanxes of obsessors. We followed our masters from security closely and learned how to find the leaders of frightful, deceitful phalanxes, persecutors, of miserable mortals whom they often induce to commit suicide. We frequently visited meetings organized by the disciples of Kardec, meaning spiritist meetings, collaborating with them as much as they let us. Let's observe this, collaborating with them as much as they let us. We assisted many sufferers who did not believe in spiritist ideas, but who were in need of help nevertheless. We visited prisons and hospitals. We went to desolate regions of Brazil and Africa to encourage and give material assistance to prisoners coming from a bad spiritual past who were now facing expiatory hardships in physical bodies, disfigured by leprosy, disparged by mental impairment, or marked by deformation. We even dared to go to the homes of the earth's high and mighty, places often teeming with dreadful suffering and potential for suicide, despite the factitious glories that surrounded them. Did you see that? Visiting the homes of the people who were influential, 
people who were wealthy, people who were famous, powerful. The potential of committing suicide recently, last year, we had the suicide of two celebrities in America that were shocking to the whole world, right? Kate Spade and Anthony Bordeaux. I don't remember how to pronounce his last name. People who had it all, but not necessarily had it all. They lacked something, like Camilo, like Camilo. Now, in this chapter, he's going to talk about mediumship. Are you ready? Before we go to the center thing, we're going to talk about how mediumship mediumistic meetings can be decompressing the pressure that exists on the earth the good spirits like camilo said we want to work with you guys but you guys sometimes don't let us work with you are you ready are you ready hmm? Ostensible by means of mediumistic collaboration structured for lofty principles, inconspicuous in their many manifestations, and impossible to be narrated in their entirety to the reader, we carried out our activities for many years in the diverse areas of charity. And if more than once rebellious afflictions overcame us when in touch with the suffering of others, also more than once we received sweet consolation knowing that our goodwill had contributed to drying a few tears. Okay. Okay. Now. Before I talk about other things, I'm just flipping the page. I'll be back there. We will talk about the mediumship part. Okay. All right. It begins right here. As for us, the pupils, our essays, they are talking about writing, okay? They would write and then a number of mediums trusted by our institute were brought to these gatherings that they had there in the spiritual realm under the auspices of their guardians and were able to glimpse with difficulty what we saw in all its splendor. It was meant to be an incentive for the mediumistic work they had committed to before reincarnating. A learning experience, okay, hold on, inherent to the re-education plan needed for their progress as interpreters of the invisible and a less difficult way to prepare them for the tasks like the ones we harbored in our own thoughts. We would then be stirred by a sacred enthusiasm because we thought that the task of communicating to incarnates the things that were revealed to us would be easy. Certain as we were that our efforts would be immediately accepted. But we did not bear in mind one disconcerting obstacle. What obstacle is that? Mediums have little desire to actually practice authentic Christian principles. Ooh, Mediums have little desire to actually practice authentic Christian principles. They may think they are abiding by them, but in reality, they are incapable of self-denial. They are incapable of self-denial. They are averse to the lofty studies essential for all those who deem themselves to be initiates. They are lazy 
regarding the work of their own redemption and that of their neighbors, and to whom they owe the sacred duty of defense against ignorance about spiritual matters, since they themselves are gifted with faculties proper for such endeavors. Furthermore, there are occasions when in this harmony with themselves in the illuminating spheres, they emit mental reflexes, like personal ideas, convinced that they are communicating the thoughts of spirits when they have actually done nothing, not even the moralization of their own minds, to merit such a lofty mandate. And it is with the most profound sadness that we disclose in these pages, written in the most fervent desire to serve, the disappointment of those in the spirit world who, interested in the evolution of humanity, observe the lack of vigilance on the part of mediums in general, their lack of desire to detach themselves from the frivolities and idleness of the material world. Circumventing the urgent duty of right, ridding themselves of many attitudes that are harmful to the sublime mandate of mediumship, in which the gentle voice of the Good Shepherd has not yet been able to remove from them. Therefore, we're making this digression to point out the fact that unfortunately, mediums themselves hamper the action of the planet's spirits instructors. As many mediums that there are in excellent physical, psychical condition fall into ostracism and the non-productivity of serious things. This happens while the Lord's work keeps piling up all around due to a lack of good workers on the physical plane as people flounder around in the darkness in spite of living in a time of enlightenment. They are misguided to a, due to a lack of spiritual nourishment, hungering for the light of knowledge, thirsting for the living water that would soothe their soul, disconsolate and saddened by accumulation of misfortunes. This is a shake-up. And we agree. Because... People who really commit, rare. And people who commit to this work and really want to abide to the teachings of Jesus, rare, more rare, or rarer, however we say it. The question for us is, we cannot do anything in a spiritist center thinking that it's ours our house it's jesus we have to be very careful like chico xavier chico xavier is an example he had the self-denial he didn't he was a benegated he was selfless he allowed people to blossom. He team worked, but he allowed people like a teamwork, like a soccer team, or a basketball team, or a football team, or a baseball team, any good team, people have different roles and they play together. There's no thing about competition. Like, oh my gosh, he's always the goalie. Oh, he's always making the go. I am not. Well, because you're not in that position. You're not supposed to make the go. The goalie cannot make the go. Well, they can, but they're not supposed to worry about it. And you can't be at the defense and at the same time scoring. This is called pride. Pride when we are not satisfied with our role in a team and we destroy the good works because we are competing and that's what lack of self-knowledge old conditionings many people who enter spiritism 
we come from previous religious experiences. And many people who today coordinate the works, they were once in the churches of the past. Sometimes they were the priests or the nuns and they coordinated a whole community. Now they go there, they are mingling, team working, and they don't know how to share the stage. They create these little clusters of people. And instead of creating what Kardec said, a homogeneous group with one mindset, we have 10 different groups in one center. It's a mess. It's a mess. A complete mess. So for us, we would say there are good groups around the world. Of course there are. But we need to adjust ourselves in such a way that when we come to mediumship, it's sacred. So sacred that when we go read the medium's book, item 341, it says, conditions to attract good spirits and to repel bad spirits in a meeting. First condition, we have to be on the same page. I wouldn't participate in a mediumistic meeting if I didn't trust 100% everybody who is there. If I have any antagonistic feeling, like Kardec said in that item, any non-fraternal feeling, I wouldn't be there. I wouldn't. As a medium myself, it's too risky. Because when we are not in synchronicity, we're allowing other spirits to join in. The good spirits can do very little, like Camilo is saying here. They have great ideas. They even prepare us. They bring us to the spiritual realm. But then when we are here, we don't want to dominate our things. A medium who drinks alcohol or a person who participates in a mediumistic meeting and has not read themselves of these kinds of harmful suicidal behaviors, what kind of spirits you're going to attract? What about the moral part? I agree. I cannot be in, let's say, I will use this word, immoral behavior, and in these meetings without consequences. I'll give an example. If somebody who is in this meeting is married and is flirting with other people, that is a no-no. If you participate in a mediumistic meeting and you are having an affair with somebody who is married, a no-no. If you are having one that stands one after the next just because you're alone and you feel like, oh, oh my gosh, I'm by myself, I meet this person, have one night stand, and then another person. And then you go to mediumistic meetings, participating in them. You think there will be no consequences? There will. We'll not be able to fly too high, connect with the higher spirits. We will connect with spirits, but not those who are really mentoring, who are really, who have this productivity with us okay so we really need to listen to what Camilo is saying they may think they abide but they are incapable of self-denial they are averse to the lofty studies essential for all those who deem themselves to be initiates and if you ask well Vanessa so who is going to be in a mediumistic meeting I, I think we can study mediumship and start practicing the steps, but then there is a, a room for what we call like probation. Like any course, you need prerequisites for the course and for the practice. You may graduate in a certain area, that doesn't mean you're gonna be a professional practicing it. To practice, you need another level of commitment, of expertise, of practice. So the same for mediumship. You study it, 
you start stepping into the initiation of it. But to go from there to the real mediumistic practice and this obsession, which is the top of the list, it will require renunciation. Yeah, many people don't want to listen to this, of course. <laughs> of course. Because it's hard. But who is saying this? Camilo, from his perspective. And he says, they are averse to the lofty essentials. Studies essential for all those who deem themselves to be initiates. And they are lazy regarding the work of their own redemption. I know many people say, but Vanessa, come on. And then they engage in 10,000 things that are harmful. How are we going to be able to be in a meeting? If you go to work and you are, um, and you are not one with the laws of the physical realm, right? We need to be citizens who respect the law where we live to have credit, moral credit. Chico Xavier is the example. It doesn't matter. Thank you, Adil, somebody. It doesn't matter if it's far or not. We are to push ourselves to that direction or else. We can't give ourselves excuses any longer. I'm not saying to you, Adilson, but to all of us, we need to press on, as Emmanuel says. There is a message in the book, uh, The Way, the Truth, and the Life, that says, what are you waiting for? We already know what we need to do. We can no longer give excuses. And I know there are many people here who live in different parts of the world where you don't have spirit centers. The question is this, what are you waiting for? You're waiting for the coronavirus to come and close the whole city so you start doing the spiritist meetings? We can't do things out of fear. We have to do things out of love. But we have to have courage. And I understand when you start a group, your life is never going to be the same. It's a lot of work. To start is easy. To maintain Mamma mia. It requires a lot of work and effort. A lot of renunciation. Because while many people are planning their fun trips, fun gatherings, you are planning your spiritist groups, spiritist centers, sustenance. It's not easy. It's wonderful for us. But in the lies of the world, we are not understood. People don't understand. So they say here, he says, we owe the sacred defend, duty of defense against ignorance about spiritual murders. We asked to help people illuminate themselves before we came here. And if you're living out of Brazil, one more reason for you as a spiritist to do your work. Or we will regret. That's a sure thing. Because it was right there in our face. And what were we doing? We were lazy. Camilo is saying this. Mm -hmm. They are disappointed because the high spirits are interested in our evolution. But mediums themselves hamper the action of the planet's spirit instructors. That's critical, right? And the Lord's work keeps piling up around due to lack of good workers. On the physical plane, as people flounder around in the darkness in spite of living a time of enlightenment. So here we have it. Camilo saying to us, and I agree, daily the spiritist works expand, but we don't, the works expand exponentially. But the spiritist workers 
who come and stay and continue, they come and say, I want to help. They help one thing go away. They help one another thing go away. Hey, commitment to yourself. Commitment. That's the old person in us. That's exactly what we're talking about here. Right, Teresa? And I share this because we've been on this route and I share, it's not simple. But we're all in this. You know? It's a treasure. It's a treasure for us. Camilo is saying to us something even more beautiful here in this chapter. He says that besides their works and their studies, there were days dedicated to festivities in Hope City. What a beautiful name, Hope City. Authentic examples of a sacred art, the art of the good. Sacred art, so days in which they would gather together and enjoy all of it in sacred art, art for the good. For the longest time, humanity has used the arts for the pleasures and the senses of the physical body. With the good spirits, we redefine it and it becomes sacred. Art is no longer for pleasure, is no longer to numb the senses, it's for deep enlightenment. So he says, they had these gatherings, they put decorations, luminaries of the colony came along and shared their liter literature, music, oratory, through mental expositions with images, and big names like Victor Hugo, Frederic Chopin would come from, and others would come from other colonies, other spheres, and delight everybody with their sacred art. And we already know that Victor Hugo, as they say here, has lived many lives besides that one in particular in France since ancient times. Greece and Italy, etc., always promoting this beautiful art. And now, as a spiritist spirit, already incarnated, as Divaldo Franco said, he's in charge of the renaissance of the true art towards sacred art, art for the good on earth. So watch and see, because you're seeing little by little arts will will adjust to the principles of universal consciousness, which is the Christ consciousness. Frederic Chopin as well, and they would come, take part in their re-education by the action of reality, materialized in a way that we could follow the precious nuances of his emotive vibrations, su transubstantiating in enchanting topics of the epic of the spirit through early earthly migrations and stays in the invisible. So, Frederico Chopin, though he was more evolved, he was not as elevated as Victor Hugo because he was considered kind of suicidal spirit because he lived very shortly, only 39 years of age because of his reckless life, though he was a genius, a, a prodigy in, at his time. But in the spiritual realm, he realized about Jesus and he march towards using arts for the good. Isn't this beautiful? So we are learning here that in order for us to renew this part of us, we need to use arts to boost the senses. And that's why I have here a little piece of a book that is not translated yet, 
by Casimiro Cunha. We did Drops of Light, and it's on YouTube and Facebook page at Kardec Radio. Uh, one of his books of poetry, Casimiro Cunha, through Chico Xavier, wrote several books. And though this poem is not translated, but just to show to us a little bit what sacred art is. Poetry for the good. He talks about the seed and he says, allow me to read it in Portuguese and then I will tell you in English, okay? A semente, the seed. Nos quadros vivos da roça, a semente pequenina é página aberta aos homens mostrando lição divina. É minúscula e somente a luz de grande atenção pode ser reconhecida no campo de plantação. Quanto pesa? Quase nada. Coisa muito inferior calcada aos pés, sem cuidado nas lutas do lavrador. No entanto, grãozinho humilde, que pouca gente repara, tem tarefas e caminhos lições de beleza rara. Humilde, pequena e pobre, abandonada ao monturo, a semente é a garantia do edifício do futuro. Coisa mínima lançada ao vasto lençol do chão vai ser árvore, celeiro, remédio, alimentação. Mas é justo ponderar ao senso da criatura que a espécie de produção responde à semeadura. Laranjeira da laranja. Macieira da maçã. Planta rude do espinheiro é mais espinho amanhã. As sementes ignoradas da roça desconhecida são iguais às bagatelas do quadro de nossa vida. Uma palavra, um conselho, um gesto, uma vibração vão crescer e produzir conforme a nossa intenção. What did he say? He said that in the, in the countryside, the little seed is like an open page to humanity showing us the divine lesson. The seed is small, minuscule, and only the light of great attention can recognize its importance in the field of plantations. How much does it weigh? Almost nothing. It's, a, it's something very small, that is in our foot, at our foot, without care in the struggles of the agriculture. However, humble grain that few people note, it has tasks and pathways of lessons bountiful. Humble, small, and noble abandoned in the soil. The seed is the guarantee of the future construction. Minimal thing that is thrown in the vastness of the soil. It will be a tree. It will be a medication. It will be also food. But it's fair to ponder to the sense of humanity that the species of production responds to the sowing. An orange tree gives orange. An apple tree gives apple. The rough plant of thorns brings more thorns tomorrow. Those seeds that are ignored in the unknown fields will be just like the little things in our life. One word, one advice, one gesture, one vibration will grow and produce according to our intention. Got it? This is sacred art. This is just a glimpse. Casimiro Cunha, 
right, Carol Correa? Very wise and beautiful. He shows to us what sacred art is all about. Chico Xavier was a wonderful and humble medium. He was not waiting any longer. He brought it in, boom, published. Many people doubted Chico Xavier. Many people didn't respect Chico Xavier. And yet, he kept himself humble, fulfilling his work. I know many mediums and many people who are spiritists who don't do the works because they are concerned about being accepted, being valued. They don't do anything. Like Camilo is saying here, they are forgotten and they are not productive because they are always waiting for somebody to applaud, to boost them, to say how great they are. We can't. We need to keep ourselves. And if people criticize us, like Andrea Louis says in one of his books, it's people's problems, right? If they criticize us, let's take the most of it. But we need to be non-violent and be compassionate towards those who are still violent. We're still to conquer that non-violence inside of us. So the beauty of it all is that these high spirits are also looking forward to help us. Now, the highlight, huh? which is going to be a connection for tomorrow, okay? Camilo said at the last third of this chapter that two events marked his life and changed it forever. The first one, and they happened like years apart, the first event was in when he unexpectedly was visited by his parents and his wife. And he says none of them asked him why he committed suicide. Of course, they were more evolved. He said that had a great impact on him. He talks about the, the women in the colony, in that city, who carefully prepared the physical environment of the colony, of the, the settings, for people to visit the suicide spirits, including Camilo. And he said that he himself felt like he was in his house with his parents, with his wife. How beautiful, this is service, right? He says, in the exact scenario, scenario of the house where I was born, that I had the ineffable joy of seeing my dear mother, whom I lost, I had lost in infancy and had, and had seen buried, of being able to kiss her hands like before, while at the same time, flinging myself into the protecting arms of my old father, relieving me of a longing that had never left my heart, always tormented by incomprehension and a thousand conflicts. I saw my wife again, whom death had whisked away in the middle of my dream of a happy marriage, and whom I could have met again a long time ago in the invisible, had it not been for the rebelliousness of my heinous act. So beautiful, so beautiful. To our surprise, our beloved visitors added that they had not been able to do anything for us due to the complex situation we had created with our suicide, a situation much like that of prisoners on whom the country's laws have imposed a life apart from other citizens. I wept many tears. Lulled by the loving care of my unforgettable parents, I lingered in the company of several of my family members who, like me, were all discarnate. My companions in misfortune had the same rights as there were no special privileges or predilections, but only strict justice based on the laws of attraction and affinity. <clears throat> okay. The second event, da -da -da -da. this will connect with the chapter tomorrow, okay? We're going to just give a teaser and tomorrow we continue. You may be asking, 
what makes us gravitate to suicide? Is it only the situation of their life? Know ourselves. Like we saw with the Paminondas in the previous chapter. Today, we're going to march, we're going to begin a new awareness with Camilo. He said that as soon as the Paminondas course started, he was also subjected to the therapy the moral therapy and the knowledge therapy, the self-knowledge therapy that Epaminondas was facilitating. Just like uh, uh, Amaury Ferrari yesterday. And it says that he was asked to sit on a special chair and assistants would connect his mind, Camilo's mind, to screens. And, okay. And how did it happen, right? Epaminonda said to Camilo, do not hesitate. In order to operate the inner reform that will lead our souls to redemption, we need to support ourselves with the utmost courage. Without determination, without heroism, without valor, we will be unable to evolve to progress towards glory. Remember that cowards are punished by their own weakness, by the shame that envelops them. Remember that rehabilitation is being imposed on you every time pain comes your way, every time suffering strikes the fibers of your being. Be strong, for the Supreme Creator rewards valorous souls with the joy of victory. Then Camilo asked for the help of Mother Mary and he resigned himself. He said, I cannot recall what happened. He no longer felt he was there. And then Epaminonda said, Camilo, I commend you. So created for the glory of life in the divine bosom. Return to the starting point and examining the book that you carry within yourself the lessons that your lives have given you. Learn from yourself to fulfill duty and to honor the law of the one who created you. Then draw up appropriate plans of expiation and edification so that you will owe to your own self the glory of taking redemptive flights towards the eternal bosom whence you came. He felt this Torpor, he couldn't see anymore. He found himself in the year 33 when Jesus was being crucified. He was in Jerusalem. Camilo saw himself in a life in Jerusalem. On the very day that Jesus is being sentenced, the martyrdom, everything. Camilo was there. Camilo was there. You want to know more? Tomorrow. Because now we need to pause for our exercise. As Epaminonda said to Camilo, and kindly our dear friend Adilson pasted here, these words are for us our exercise in the next 24 hours. Without determination, without courage, without heroism, without valor, we'll be unable to evolve. And he says more. He says here to us. In order to operate the inner transformation that will lead our souls to redemption, we need to support ourselves with courage. So, we won't be able to be happy until we have the courage to face ourselves. No excuses. We can no longer afford it. We need to be courageous. We need to rehabilitate ourselves. Not only Camilo, all of us on earth. That's why we are reincarnated. We're not reincarnated because we're beautiful. We're reincarnating because 
we need to calibrate ourselves with the divine harmony. Of course, we're beautiful, but I'm just saying. We're not here because, oh, we're passing by. No, Jesus is passing by. We are not. We need really to focus and be determined and fulfill our duties. If we fulfill our duties, guilt will disappear. Guilt, guilt mounts when we don't fulfill our duties. And the first duty is to know ourselves. So in the next 24 hours, let us evaluate inside of us how far we can recognize the tendencies the instinctive tendencies, as Kardec says in the Spirit's book, that we have brought to this life. I'll give an example. Let us say you like drawing very much. Where do you think this comes from? Because it's not only from this life. It comes from previous lives. Do you have a feeling connected to certain civilizations. You don't need to recall the life, but just to acknowledge your roots. Because when we acknowledge our roots, we're stronger. We're more homogeneous. Let's observe ourselves and let's observe the tendencies that are not very happy. Where are they coming from? Right? Let us observe and, and try to study ourselves a little bit. Because tomorrow when we come back, we are going to continue this regression of memory with Camilo. And with him, we're potentially going to learn more about ourselves. And the needs to adjust ourselves. Ah, oh, Vanessa. Can you say something happy? Yes. The seed. Remember Casimiro Cunha saying, he said here, a word, a advice, an advice, a gesture, a vibration will grow and produce according to our intention. Meaning, one little thing can become a beautiful thing if and only if we put intention into it. Okay? How about joining forces right now? Right now. Right, sunshine, courage to look at our imperfections in particular. Thank you for saying this. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. How about right now? Practicing self-denial. Want to try together? Let's practice self-denial. How? Let us right now forget about all of our needs. Whether you are watching or listening to this on demand or live, forget everything. Let us play the Ave Maria and put our whole hearts in vibrations for the suicidal spirits to help them out wherever they are. Joining forces with Mother Mary and her legion. Forget about don't ask anything for yourself, just for the suicidal spirits. Shall we? Let's practice. Let's practice. So here we are. Let us play away, right? The Ave Maria and pray together. Selflessness. Mm -hmm. Right? Thank you, Adilson. Thank you, Rihanna. Let us go, friends. Let us visualize Mother Mary. She is our leader. She is the one who is ahead of us saying, join me, help me. Let us close our eyes if you can. If you can. If you're driving, don't close your eyes. But let us feel it, Mother Mary. Her loving embrace, her maternal warmth, her sky blue blanket of healing light. Let us visualize 
Mother Mary and her beautiful legion of servants. In their rescue effort, rescue work, towards those who are suffering immensely. It's not on us to judge. Mother Mary, please allow us to share the little that we have conquered in wishes of wellness, of consolation to brothers and sisters who have committed suicide, we feel for them. The pains, the sorrows, the anguishes, the never-ending pains. Please receive our offer. Loving hearts, joining your immense love as we with you visualize your blanket of sky blue healing light enveloping each suicidal spirit with much love and much care. Pray so they can receive the relief and the opportunity to a new beginning. Learning to forgive themselves and others as they are also forgiven by many who were impacted by their actions. And we pray for also those leaders of obsessor phalanxes who induce suicide. We know that they are deeply hurt, thus they hurt others. May they feel your call, Mother Mary, your invitation to a new beginning so they can use their intelligence, their potentialities for the construction of the good. May also those who are incarnated feeling suicidal at the edge of it May they be covered by your blanket of healing light and listen to your sweet voice whispering to them, my dear child, this shall pass. My dear child, this shall pass. My dear child, this shall also pass. And they feel enveloped by consolation, new hope, as they sleep in the arms of your messengers who will care for their renewal and the continuation of their sacred reincarnation. As for us, we don't ask anything. Not because we don't need anything, but because we are certain that focusing on the wellness of others, we will also inevitably feel 
their wellness and be well. Please receive your, our gratitude, Mother Mary. And thank you for bringing this masterpiece of love and hope. May Yvonne Pereira, wherever she is, receive our deep gratitude. May Camilo also receive our gratitude. And the mentor of the project, Leon Denis, our deepest gratitude. May we stay under your inspiration and hope today and always, and so be it. La da di da da da. Hope, huh? it's always about hope. Lifting hope here at Kardec Radio, always nourishing our souls, friends. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for participating, for making this work ever more special. It's about learning and working together. And tomorrow, super special. Come back tomorrow because Camilo is going to reveal something really incredible. Come back here at Kardec Radio with Lifting Hope. Always nourishing our souls, friends. Thank you until tomorrow. God willing.